Question of the day, what is your favorite property that is now public domain, right? I mean, Cthulhu's all over the place. We've seen just an absolute spate of Wizard of Oz, but another one that is getting a lot of attention would be Alice, which brings us today to this card game called, well, it's called Alice. But even though it's in this nice looking little box that looks like a book, does it feel like, I don't know, Alice oh, Harper, obviously she's over there directing this video. It's one of her favorite movies from Disney is Alice. Obviously the story's a little bit deeper and darker, especially that remake of the uh, Through the Looking Glass they made on Disney with the rubber suit Jabberwocky. It was terrifying. But anyway, we're gonna take a look today at this public domain game, Alice. See if it lives up to the hype and the name, the hype, the name of its IP right now. Come back up talk about what we think about it and all sort of things like that right now oh it's the new dual reality hat but it does kind of make sense doesn't it let's look at it Couple things to know, you'll start off with two main character cards in your hand, as well as a chapter card. Now, one thing about the chapter cards, when you play a chapter card, it's the last thing you can do in your turn, because you can literally only play one chapter card per turn. Now, just because you play it doesn't mean that it's gonna fill up and you'll score it, it just means that you can't play multiple of these in a turn. So this would be kind of your starting hand here. Now, each of these cards, they have some point values on them, but they also show uh, wonders. They allow you to do certain powers. Like, for instance, this one allow you to choose one of the cards in the Tea Party display and activate its wonder as if you had just played it. Um, although it does something else as well. But notice this one here, the uh, White Rabbit, allows you to take two of the Tea Party cards in, from there and put them into your hand. So your hand can grow, and you'll just get these powers, which will allow you to manipulate the Tea Party area and collect the Tea Party cards. Uh, they all do different things, basically the point being so that you can grow uh, the cards available to get your uh, chapter scored. When you play a chapter, the vortex opens up and cards that are in the tea party can go over here to your chapter. Other characters can do this as well. The vortex is pretty strong. Uh, or if theirs is complete during this time, they can do this. So you would require these cards that are shown here. Once it's done, you just flip it over and you'll keep this to the end. Certain cards have certain wonders that kind of change the rules a little bit on even such as that. Uh, you can look at Alice a lot. You put any one of the pages of your chapters if it were matching characters, so it can be Alice is kind of wild. Uh, you can take up Stuka. We just talked about that. Cheshire Cat is discarded at any time to block another Cheshire Cat from blocking. Discard at any time to block any character's uh, any character or a main character's wonder. So it's just kind of a, a mess with you card. Place the first card from your chapter deck face up in front of you. Doing this, the hatter opens the book and activates its vortex. So you can place character cards into your chapters as usual. Once the book is closed, you can proceed with your adventure normal. This basically means that you could potentially get multiple chapters completed in one turn by playing the Mad Hatter. Uh, put all tiny and huge cards from the Tea Party into your hand, even those that are covered up by other cards. So it allows you to get a ton of cards. Now, there were there will only ever be nine cards out here. So when this goes up, let's say you make it gigantic, another card will come out here. Now let's just say you chose this card to make gigantic again. This will sit on top of this one. So you'll never have more than three, three, and three out here, uh, gigantic, normal, and tiny. So it's not a way to get multiple, multiple cards out there. It just allows you to get the cards up in the gigantic spot where they belong, um, and then the tiny spot as well. And then the rest of the powers are kind of like the same sort of thing. They allow you to manipulate the board, manipulate other players, manipulate your cards. Uh, it's not a super mean game, but there are a couple different strategies you could use with the card soldiers here. For instance, they, uh, they fight. Discover this card along with another card soldier placed on one of your chapters to get rid of it. Place the card soldier on any page of the chapters if it were matching character. If the chapter scored, the card soldier would go to that player's victory pile and score negative points. So it's a way to get negative points for your enemy, uh, for your other player. So, uh, interesting, you, again, you're just trying to score these cards out there, get the most points you can by the end of the game by having the most points in your chapters. Pretty straightforward, pretty basic card game. So that's Alice. In a nutshell, it's a card game in which you're quickly playing cards out of your hand that do certain powers, as you saw some of the different powers there, in order to get more cards to your stories that you've laid out, your chapters that you laid out, so that you can score more points at the end of the game. That's it, essentially. Now, as far as the IP itself, in my opinion, it doesn't show a lot of Alice-ness to it, considering 
it's basically a card game, just like any other card game, uh, that happens to have the theme attached to it. So you can take this theme and put it on really anything else, and it's nothing about the Alice theme so much that makes it special to this theme, which to me is kind of strange. So that that's my issue with the theming. Now, I do like the art. The art style is neat. It's actually kind of cool looking for that. Uh, it's, it's just... It, that still bothers me that it doesn't feel like it's an Alice game. We like Alice in this house. It would be nice to have a good Alice game if that was possible. So uh, that's how the game plays. That's what it looks like, theming and all that sort of stuff. And as far as how the game plays itself, is it a good card game to talk about, you know, in general as, as card games go? But actually it's kind of a fun card game because it's quick and it's, you know, all the powers are there and you kind of get to do different things based on, you know, the different powers of your character and such as that. So I do like that aspect of it. I like the idea of the, the mushrooms and the cake, which kind of move the cards up or down, which require, uh, which are required for certain uh, chapters. So I like the actual mechanics of the game itself of how it plays. I just don't think it fits the theme very well. And again, that's me being kind of a, st a stickler for theming, uh, even when it comes to card games. Well, let me give you another example, though. Think of a game like Arboretum. Basically, you're creating an arbor. No, you're not. You're laying out cards in your tableau. But the theme somehow works because even the way it scores, the pass, and all that sort of stuff, it just makes a little bit more sense than this. Now, you could say, but no, you're opening up a vortex and cards are coming into your chapter. No, that doesn't make sense when it comes to Alice. But all in all, total package. It's nice art, fun, tight little mechanics. It's a little. It could run a little bit long, which is the only thing that bothers me about it, uh, gameplay-wise. But... Other than that, solid entry. If you like the Alice genre, if you're a stickler for this kind of stuff, this is your junky thing, you know, you love Alice, then this is one for you, obviously. Uh, cool box. Now, this is where I'm, I'm kind of funny about this. I, I hate tins, really do hate tin boxes. They bend, they mold, they shape weird, and they fall open all the time. This one's a weird shaped box. It's an actual book, right? But strangely, this one works for me. I just, I actually like the way this book uh, works because it's not quite as bad, right? It feels like a book, looks like a book, and it's got that nice look. But also, it kind of stays shut really well with that Velcro. It actually does a good job holding it shut. So that strangely is a win for me uh, when it comes to putting this on the shelf. So. That's the total package of Alice. You've heard me say some good things, some bad things about it. Whether this is for you, you let me know in the comments below. Uh, also, let me know what your favorite public domain IP is. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, at Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see you. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.